Let's first look at the option pricing formula for call options and put options. So we have these five factors, which is S sub zero, the underlying price, X would be the exercise price or the strike price. And then we have Sigma, which is the volatility in uh, percentage per annum. R here would be the continuously compounded risk-free interest rate as well uh, in percentage per annum. And T would be the time to expiration in years. If the option expires in six months time, then the time to expiration would be 0 0.5, which is uh, six divided by 12. Or we can also express it in terms of uh, days over the year. Then we have this function n here. The n x would be the standard normal cumulative distribution function. So this is the formula for the call option price and the put option price. Then you will have to calculate D1 and D2. Now, of course, uh, for this set of formulas, it excludes the dividend yield. And then Merton subsequently uh, built in the dividend yield into the formula. So the dividend yield is, is denoted by Q, which is the continuously compounded dividend yield, which is highlighted in red here. So we have to make these adjustments into the formula. So let's first start by building this into the Excel worksheet. Right, so let's start off by creating the header. And we'll format that. Then we'll key in the labels of the inputs. We have our underlying price, we have our exercise price. Then we have volatility in per annum terms. We'll enter this in percentage. Then we have the interest rate, which is also per annum. Then we have the dividend yield, also in per annum terms. Then we have time to expiration, which should be in years. Now, as for some users, they may want to input the number of days to expiration. So we can leave that uh, if you want that flexibility and then we'll divide it over the number of days in the year. Now for this, some people may use the calendar uh, calendar year where it's 365 or 366, whereas some may actually use uh, the number of trading days in the year, like 252 or 250. So we can keep that flexible by leaving it there. So I'll just turn this to bold. So of course, uh, let's key in some sample inputs. So let's say we have a stock where the underlying price is now 307.35. This is all arbitrary. And let's say there, is an, uh, there are options where the exercise price is $335. Then we have the volatility. Uh, let's assume that it's 30 25%. Then we have uh, interest rate. Uh, let's say it's 2%. Uh, let's keep the dividend yield as zero for now. So let's assume that there's 102 days until expiration of the options and then there's 365 days in a year okay i'll remove the decimal place okay so the time to expiration here would be the number of days to expiration divided by the number of days in the year so i'll keep that to about four decimal places and then for price uh, let's keep that to two decimal place then for the percentage i'll just keep it to two decimal place for now now, since of course uh, there are inputs and there are formulas, uh, let's let's let color them or you can let change the font color. So for these inputs, uh, I'll just highlight them as in yellow or in gold. Now, next we'll have to calculate uh, the formula for the call option and the put option. But before that, uh, to make things easier, I will calculate the components of the formula that will be regularly used. Okay, so for example, uh, we have the natural log of the underlying price over the exercise price. Then we have the, of course, the volatility over uh, the volatility multiplied by the square root of time. So for that, I'll just create this to simplify. So I'll create equation. So I will select the sigma symbol and then which is square root of t. I'll copy this. And then uh, I'll just click here and paste. Okay, we have the symbol in. And then next part, we'll calculate uh, the risk-free rate plus, uh, sorry, the risk-free rate minus the dividend yield plus. So we'll cut the next, for next, next we'll calculate the risk-free rate minus the dividend yield plus half of the volatility squared multiplied by the time, the expiration. So for that, uh, I'll take, so we'll have um, a bracket here. We have R minus Q plus this. We have half multiplied by 
variant squared. So of course you can you can of course type based on the latex or you can just uh, choose the symbol here, right? Then t. So I'll, and let's put a multiply here. What's it done? That I'll copy and then I'll paste it in. Then we have d1, d2, cumulative probability for d1, the cumulative probability for d2, and then the same thing for uh, negative d1 and negative d2. Then we'll calculate the exponential function for negative uh, for negative residue rate multiplied by time to expiration. The exponential function for negative q, which is a dividend yield times the time to expiration. Then we'll align this to the right. Then we'll calculate the components. So for the first one, we have the natural log of the underlying price B3 over B4. Then we have the volatility multiplied by the square root of the time to expiration. Then we have the risk rate minus the dividend yield plus half multiplied by the volatility squared multiply by time to expiration then for d1 for d1 we'll take b cell b12 plus b14 cross bracket then divide by cell b13 okay then for d2 uh, we'll take cell b15 minus b13 then for the cumulative probability we'll use the function norm dot s dot dist so Z here will be the standard score. So we'll start with D1 and then uh, for cumulative, you can choose true or you can just press type one uh, to denote that we want a cumulative probability. And then I uh, will copy this, just highlight this and press control D. Okay, or you can just copy and paste. Then we'll repeat this. So for this part, we'll capture uh, D2 as the Z score. Then here we'll repeat the same thing. So for again, norm.s.dist and then I'll choose negative and then D1. And then one for true, then I'll copy it down. So we have negative d2 now. Then lastly, we have the exponential function. So this exponential function for negative risk free rate multiplied by time to expiration. Then this would be exponential function negative times the dividend yield times the time to expiration, right? And we are done. So now we can proceed to calculate the price for the call option and the put option. So first we label, uh, let's say I'll use column E, this is call option and put option. Then column F will be for the price, let's bold this. So for the call option price, so that's equals to the underlying price, which is B3 multiplied by cell B22 and multiplied by B17. Then we minus the exercise price, which you can find in B4 then multiply by B21 and B18. So that's the price of the call option given our inputs. Then for the put option, we'll take the exercise price, okay, which is uh, B4, then multiply by B21, multiply by B20, then we minus uh, B3, multiply by B22, and multiply it by B19. Right, so that's the price of the put option.